Do bananas have protein in them? If I do two hours of cardio, am I gonna lose body fat? I really like beans, but they're a carbohydrate and those make you fat. I can't eat dinner because anything you eat after 6 p.m. turns directly into fat. This detox tea is gonna make me lose so much weight by shitting and pissing, it's gonna be awesome. Hey guys, what's going on? Shane at Shane Hubbard Fit. Today I'm going to debunk 10 of the most bullshit weight loss myths out there. Stay tuned. All right guys, are you ready for the 10 worst and most ridiculous weight loss myths out there? Let's go ahead and get started right away. Before we do though, if you like my farmer's tan, give me a good thumbs up. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with number one, which is all calories are created equal. This is simply not true. And here's a perfect example of why. You take 200 calories of steak and you take 200 calories of soda and you consume both of them at separate times and just see what happens to your metabolism. My best guess is if we're just talking about satiety, which is the feeling of fullness, you're gonna feel much more full from 200 calories of steak than you are gonna feel from 200 calories of soda. The other thing that a lot of people don't know is that fiber and protein both take calories to digest. That means that you actually burn calories digesting protein and fiber. Whereas things like carbohydrates that don't have fiber or even fat that has no fiber attached to it really doesn't cause you to burn any additional calories. Now you're not burning like 300, 400 calories, but over time you're burning 30 calories here, 30 calories there, 40 calories here. Each time you consume protein, you burn a little bit of calories to digest that food. Same goes with fiber. So over the course of your life, over the course of even just a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, that is going to add up. That is a very big difference than our friend soda. It almost takes, if not any, calories to burn uh, soda, it pretty much takes no calories to burn soda, it just goes right through you. It's already so processed that you're not actually gonna need any uh, energy to break down something like soda. All right, so let's go to tip number two, which is once you start losing weight, it's a linear process. You just continue to lose weight over and over and over, and you can actually predict it. This is a huge myth, and I think that there are more people out there that get this confused than almost any other myth. Once you start losing weight, it is going to be a roller coaster ride. Some days you're gonna be heavier, some days you're gonna be lighter. I'm gonna post right here a couple of graphs from my own clients showing that almost every single time they lose a substantial amount of weight, they actually gain weight beforehand. So here's an example. Let's say you weigh 200 pounds. You lose five pounds, then you gain three pounds, then you lose six pounds, then you gain two pounds. It's this back and forth cycle as your body weight fluctuates. So if you're trying to lose weight and you step on the scale one day and you're heavier, and then you step on the scale two days later and you're lighter, and you're kind of going through this emotional roller coaster, just expect that your weight is going to jump around a lot. What you wanna pay attention to instead of the day-to-day -day scale weight or the day-to-day -day body fat is the trend over time. Are you consistently losing weight? If I was to look at January compared to now, is there a downward trend in your weight such that you're losing weight at a pretty gradual pace? If the trend is that overall on average you are losing weight, that's the only thing you need to pay attention to. All right, so myth number three is eat less, exercise more. Sounds like a pretty logical explanation for how to lose body fat. The problem is, is it's more complicated than that. Yes, eating less can help you lose weight over time, but there's a very distinct difference between eating less calories and eating less food. Let me explain why. So again, let's go back to that all calories aren't created equal. If I eat 200 calories of broccoli versus 200 calories of peanut butter, I could very easily eat 200 calories of peanut butter because it's roughly about a tablespoon. Now I could do four of those and that would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 to 600 calories. So if I did that same thing with broccoli, I would have to eat a crap ton of broccoli, probably more than I could actually stomach so that I would naturally stop eating broccoli before it got to a too highly too high calorie amount. So as you can see, depending on the calories that you consume, it's not really about eating less total volume, it's about eating less calorie dense foods. So if you have a serving that is this big and it has 200 calories in it, you could probably eat three of those without even noticing, that's 600 calories. If you don't think that I'm right, go measure a bowl of almonds and see how much a bowl of almonds is. 
all right? It's, it's gonna be somewhere around the three to 400 calorie mark. So it depends a lot on the calories that you're consuming and the foods that you're consuming, all right? So that makes a big difference. Now, exercise more is probably the only part of this equation that actually is good advice. We could all exercise more, but the problem is, is that people don't just go out for a walk or go for a 45 minute weightlifting session. They go out for two hours of cardio because if some cardio is good, more must be better. And while I have nothing against cardio other than the fact that I don't really like to do it myself, if you're doing two hours of cardio, that's very unsustainable long-term. And if you really wanna lose weight and keep it off, you have to do something that's sustainable. So yes, is moving more a good, a good piece of advice? Absolutely, but don't overdo it. Is eating less a good piece of advice? It's kind of misunderstood for most people. Again, if I was to eat 200 calories of broccoli, it's gonna be a lot of broccoli. So technically I should eat less of this if I'm following this advice. Simply not true. Pay attention to caloric density of food per portion size. All right, tip number four is going to be breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Scientifically speaking, no meal is the most important meal of the day, all right? The meal time in which you eat, so if you eat breakfast or if you skip breakfast, it doesn't really matter. You wanna do what works best for you to keep a well-balanced and healthy nutrition plan, all right? So if skipping breakfast works good for you, that's fine. If eating breakfast works good for you, that's fine. What you wanna tap into is your hunger cues. Do you actually feel hungry in the morning? Do you just eat breakfast because you've been told it's the most important meal of the day? It's simply not factually true. I wake up every single morning and I am not hungry until at least 10 a.m. and I usually am not really, really hungry until noon and so I just have lunch and dinner. Now, some people wake up starving and they maybe had a lighter dinner or maybe they didn't have as much food the day before and they're gonna have breakfast and that's completely fine. Remember, the time of day that you eat is not as important as the total amount of food that you eat or total amount of calories if we're being specific. So remember, if you wake up in the morning and you don't feel hungry, don't eat. Use your hunger cues as a good indication of when you're actually hungry and when you actually need to eat. All right, we're on to number five, and number five is eating carbs after 6 p.m. automatically stores them as fat. This is probably my favorite because when I was first doing any kind of bodybuilding or, or lifting weights, this is something that I was told, and so I wouldn't eat carbs after 6 p.m. There is no scientific basis for this. There is no logic really behind this. I think where it comes from is this idea that after 6 p.m. most of us aren't doing anything active and carbohydrates really help with um, doing things like weightlifting and any type of strenuous activity. It gives you more energy. So I think somebody just put the two and two together and assumed that eating carbs after 6 p.m made them store as fat because they simply weren't being used. And that's not true. Fat is stored based on total caloric intake. So if you eat 200 grams of carbs uh, after 6 p.m. and it pushes you over your calorie needs for that day, then yes, you will gain fat. But it could have been protein and it could have been fat. It could have been any of the macronutrients. So there's nothing inherently unique about carbohydrates for fat storing. So keep that in mind. All right, so we're on to number six, and number six is dieting is an effective method for losing body fat, all right? This is simply not true, and here's why. Dieting is a short-term practice that has extreme you know, principles or extreme methods, all right? Like the ketogenic diet, cut out all carbohydrates, even the ones that have fiber in them to a certain extent. Um, things like beans, right, that are good sources of carbohydrates that have tons of fiber in them are completely wiped out. Even healthier foods that have a little bit more carbohydrates. Like I heard someone the other day say they can't eat carrots because they have too many, too many sugar calories. Um, and I was just thinking that's just asinine. Like it doesn't make any sense that someone wouldn't eat carrots. So a lot of these diets out there put in these rules that will automatically slash calories out of your total consumption, but that don't have sustaining sustainability built into them. And they do that on purpose because if you can't sustain a diet, that means you're gonna come back and buy more products. So it's kind of this vicious cycle that diets are always set up to fail so that you actually have to keep doing them. There are some things you can learn from diets. Like for instance, I learned that if I eat too many carbohydrates, I get really sleepy. I think that most people probably feel that way, or if I eat too much, I get sleepy. So, you know, sometimes you can learn things from that, but a sustainable fat loss plan is going to have a balance between carbs, fats, and proteins. And more importantly, it's gonna teach you how to tap into your hunger cues so that you can get feedback from your body when you've had the right amount of food, both from a quantity standpoint and a composition standpoint. All right, we're already to number seven, and number seven is eating eggs will give you heart disease. I love 
the cholesterol myth too, which I'll do a video on someday. But this idea that eggs are going to give you heart disease because of the cholesterol in them just doesn't make sense. I'm gonna give you a couple facts so you can make this sound, or so I can make this sound really easy and it can be really easy for you to remember. All right, so your body makes about 75% of the of all the cholesterol in your body. So you don't even have to eat cholesterol to a certain extent for your body to use cholesterol. The other thing that a lot of people don't realize about cholesterol is that it's kind of the human body's band-aid for things that are breaking down or that are broken. So when you hear about people that have uh, clogged arteries, what they really have is a bunch of cholesterol that's built up in their arteries. Now you think that that's because you're eating excess cholesterol, it's getting stored in your blood vessels, and so that's why you have things like heart disease or even an obstruction of some kind in an artery, and that's simply not true. What happens is, is when you're unhealthy, your body oxidizes and it degenerates a lot quicker than it normally would if you were healthy. So what happens is your blood vessels basically start to deteriorate. And what your body does to try to patch that up is it puts cholesterol in its place. Well, if you keep having to patch the hole, just like if you had a hole and a ship and you keep patching it, but you never actually fix the real problem, then eventually that's going to build up. And that buildup is gonna cause blood flow to be restricted. So you have to understand that this whole cholesterol is causing heart disease myth is really a, a, a big one. And it's well, something that people need to understand more of is really not the cause of heart disease. The cause of heart disease is simply being unhealthy. Right? The more unhealthy you are, the more your body is going to degenerate, the quicker you're going to age, and, you're, and the body is gonna try to repair that with cholesterol. That's what it does in the human body. Eggs don't give you heart disease. All right, so now we're on to number eight, which is talking about if you eat a lot less, like if you drop your calories like really, really low, then you're going to lose more body fat quicker. Now, this is something that a lot of people get used to thinking because it's just about the numbers, right? But they don't realize that they're a dynamic human being that has lots of factors that goes into weight loss and fat loss and the whole shebang. So if you eat 2,000 calories and that keeps your weight the same and you say, oh, well, I'll just drop 1,000 calories and I'll lose body fat really quickly, the problem with that is is that your body is not only going to adapt to that, but you're gonna feel like crap. And if you feel like crap when you're trying to lose weight, it's gonna be really stinking hard to continue to lose weight and even after that, keep the weight off. So what you wanna do is you wanna try to lose weight at a rate that works really well for you and that's sustainable for you, all right? It might not be the quickest, it might not be the most amazing weight loss you've ever had, but the idea is, is that if you're losing weight at a, at a rate that allows you to sustain the weight staying off, that should always be the priority over how quickly you lose, right? There have been shows like The Biggest Loser that show people losing weight really fast. Guess where all those contestants are today? They're all back at their normal weight. So if you want to avoid doing something like this, don't count, uh, cut your calories too dang low, because if you do that, it's just gonna be a lot harder to maintain it over the course of your life. All right, so we're now on number nine, and this is probably one of my favorites in the group, which is if you eat carbohydrates, you will store them as fat automatically. Now this one comes from all the Atkins and the keto groups and all this blood sugar hormone regulation and all this stuff, and I get what they're saying. I, I think it makes some sense if you're thinking about things in the context of total food, but the problem that nobody seems to want to talk about is the different types of carbohydrates that are out there. There's a very distinct difference between a soda and a can of beans, right? They're both carbohydrates, but they're very different. It goes back to our first tip, which is all calories are not created equal, all right? Same with fruits. A lot of people believe that you shouldn't eat fruit because it's fattening because of the sugar in it. Well, the difference between fruit sugar and table sugar or soda sugar is that the fruit actually has fiber in it, and fiber makes a huge difference to how sugar is metabolized. So if you're out there fearing fruit, stop worrying about fruit. It's the, the sugar in fruit, as long as you eat it in the fruit, is not going to make you fat. And even sodas aren't gonna make you fat. I'm not saying you should go out and drink a ton of sodas, but listen, if you're keeping things in control and you're being moderate about how much you're consuming, it's gonna be so much easier to get rid of this whole idea that carbohydrates inherently make you fat. Again, there's a huge difference between whole food carbohydrates like beans and processed carbohydrates like a soda. All right guys, so that brings us to our final tip, tip number 10. This one is going to make a lot of people mad, but I need to give you the correct advice, and that is exercise is effective for fat loss. 
Unfortunately, if we just went to the gym and exercise is not enough to burn body fat. It just doesn't work that way. What you need is an exercise plan that's efficient for burning body fat, so something like weight training, and you also need to dial in your nutrition. They work together, guys. A lot of times, people wanna do one or the other, but they work together. Now, I understand a lot of times when you're getting started for the very first time or the first time in a long time, you want to just start with exercise because it's a lot easier to just go to the gym for an hour, work out, and come home. Whereas with your nutrition, you really have to like sit down and work on trying to grocery shop or buy the right food or eat healthier or, or, or things like that. And I, I know it takes a lot of work, but trust me, you're going to save so much frustration and time if you focus on your nutrition first. If you hate doing cardio, make sure you let me know in the comments section below. If you can dial in nutrition even a little bit better than it is right now, your exercise will actually promote more fat loss, all right? Now, when the other thing that I want to point out is that when you feel better, it's so much easier to exercise. If you've been eating a lot of junk foods and you've just been eating crappy food for a really long time, exercise is gonna be the most miserable experience. It's why people don't really exercise unless they have to these days. But if you feel good because the food you're eating is from the earth, it has lots of vitamins and nutrients, it's got good calories in it and all this really good stuff for you, you're gonna actually possibly want to exercise because you feel so good. And when you do exercise, although it's going to be tough, it's going to feel a lot better than it would if you were just burning junk fuel, like, you know, crackers and Cheetos and ice creams and, and crappy things like that. So anyway, guys, that is my video today. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate you sticking around all the way to the end. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you can get more videos from me every single week. And then if you guys really, really want to support my channel, a big thumbs up would really help get my video out to more people. You can also share this on your social media, wherever you're active, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, even if you want to. The more that you can get the word out and the more you want to support me, the better it is for everyone and I would really appreciate that. And then uh, guys, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, feel free to leave them down below. Before you go guys, let me know which myth was the most surprising to you.